Where would we go? I don't know. Anywhere that needs a lethal protector, I suppose. Well, true believers, it seems that we have been absolutely punked. Prank, baby! What we thought was the official setup for Tom vs. Tom in Venom Let There Be Carnage ended up being nothing more than a misdirect in No Way Home. Ultimately, that post credit scene begs the question, what's actually next for Venom? Will we see him go home to battle Andrew Garfield? Will he get stuck in a multiversal rift of the Spider-Verse? Or does he have a nefarious King of the Symbiotes waiting for him? I... Honestly, I have no clue, but it'd be fun to talk about, so let's do that. Where's my Peter 3 squad at? Seeing Andrew Garfield return as the amazing Spider-Man was truly incredible. The energy he brought to the role as the wall crawler has us chanting, Make Tasm 3! Make Tasm 3! Make Tasm 3! Make Tasm Make Tasm 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 in No Way Home, the three Spider-Men discuss some of the villains they fought in the past. Toby brings up Venom, Tom brings up Thanos, and that leaves Andrew manifesting that he wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against an alien. Unbeknownst to him, it already seems like there's a parasite sneaking around his universe, and uh, I'm not talking about Sony producer Avi Arad. In the Sony Spider-Man universe, we see that the Oscorp logo from the TASM films is included, as well as subtle references to pre-existing characters like Black Cat and Rhino. It seems entirely possible that this universe's Peter Parker is Andrew Garfield. From a behind-the-scenes standpoint, this makes total sense, as it gives audiences a recognizable Spider-Man while also allowing Tom Holland to not be burdened with a surplus of films. People have been confused as to why a journalistic investigator such as Eddie Brock would not know about a dude who swings around in red and blue spandex, who saved New York from turning into giant lizards and also stopped like some massive blue sparkling dude. Uh, and to that, you know what, that's a, that's a very good point. I, I, I don't know why he wouldn't know about him. I guess we could chalk that up to Eddie Brock being in San Francisco while Peter Parker was in New York? Sure. Hollywood filmmaking is all about trends. We've got the requels that serve as both sequels and reboots, there's the multiversal nostalgia driven, hey remember this, cash grabs like Ready Player One and Space Jam, and then there is the versus movie. You've got one highly profitable series and another one, let's make some sort of boss baby. I mean, the name The Amazing Spider-Man vs Venom alone would make hundreds of millions at the box office. Inevitably, in these versus movies comes a common enemy who will pop up in the third act, forcing the two former foes to put aside their differences, becoming besties, and learning to respect one another. And I've got the perfect villain in mind that could be pulling some strings, and that villain is... Gotcha! You gotta wait a little bit longer in this video for that. That being said, the whole older brother aspect that Andrew played into towards Tom Holland would be a perfect type of relationship for Andrew to have with the other Tom. When we last saw Eddie, he and Venom were still having some relationship troubles as they couldn't see eye to eye. We will need a cape and a mask! No, no, I think you got that covered. One wants to look out for the human race, the other one wants to bite people's heads off, you know, it's kind of like me and my ex. Andrew can continue the mentorship type role, further facilitating Venom as the lethal protector. Hot off the presses of the Daily Bugle is news that Dakota Johnson will be playing Madam Web. You may remember her from the 1994 animated series, or a little more recently in the extremely underrated gem that is Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. The biggest question that has come up since this casting is, um, why? The idea behind a Madam Web film seems a little strange, but Madam Web has been brought onto the playing field for one very big reason. The Spider-Verse. That comic series that began in 2014 has been a darling for Sony Pictures, receiving critical success through Into the Spider-Verse, and monetary success with No Way Home being Sony's most profitable movie of all time. The OG Madam Web, aka Cassandra Web, is killed off prior to the Spider-Verse even beginning, with her powers transferring over to Spider-Woman Julia Carpenter. That being said, Madam Web is the mastermind behind the aforementioned Spider-Verses in the 1994 series and Shattered Dimensions. So, how exactly does this relate to Venom? Well, Eddie Brock was looking for answers, and that bartender in No Way Home really couldn't do that. However, Madam Web certainly could. If Sony is indeed spinning a web connecting the animated Spider-Verse, Sony Universe, and Marvel Cinematic Universe, Venom will undoubtedly become an important player as he is one of the most established characters so far. Maybe as a result, we'll see him cross over into the animated medium with Across the Spider-Verse.
When the Venom movie was originally announced in 2013, another title that was in production along with it was The Sinister Six. Sony aggressively tried pushing plans for The Sinister Six, creating a super easy, barely an inconvenience origin story for them in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Everything you need is already at Oscorp. Unfortunately for Sony, one of the biggest gripes us fans had with that movie was how desperate that movie was to set up future films, and no one really liked the idea that Oscorp had already developed the villain's gimmicks, without the villains themselves being introduced. It seems that now, almost a decade later, Sony is re setting their sights back onto the Sinister Six. Plans for No Way Home originally had Venom and or Mysterio joining the final battle so there would be six villains, but the production team felt that it was a little too soon to introduce the group of six highly powerful dummies that can't stop a kid in a unitard. This is my cue to skidoo. Looking at Sony's upcoming lineup of Spidey films, it's becoming increasingly apparent that a Sinister Six is slowly becoming a reality, the same way that the Avengers were recruited all the way back in Phase 1. You become part of a bigger universe. You just don't know it yet. While Venom has never really been a member of the team's roster, he would fit perfectly alongside Sony's other anti-heroes like Morbius and Kraven. A trend in the last two Venom movies has been having Eddie go up against some nefarious symbiotes. But what if instead of Venom just fighting one ooey gooey baddie, he fights an entire planet of them? Of course, I am referring to the run of comics entitled The Planet of the Symbiotes, which includes a whole slew of goopy villains. In those issues, Eddie rejects Venom and Venom lets out a desperate shriek. L like a yell, not, not Carnage's girlfriend. Anyways, a spaceship full of symbiotes show up to Earth and start wreaking havoc. This leads to Venom, Spidey, and Ben Riley to a Stargate, which ships them faster than Prime Delivery to the planet Clintar. Confused yet? Oh, well, this was 90s Marvel. There's a reason why they almost went bankrupt during this time. As you'd imagine by the apt title, this is a planet of the symbiotes, and there's a lot of punching and kicking in like a hundred foot tall carnage. It's all pretty freaking rad. I see this event being a perfect sequel to Venom for a myriad of reasons. For starters, it does include Peter Parker, so right off the bat, you can have Andrew Garfield included into the mix. Maybe have them fight in the opening battle scene before the ship arrives on Earth. They would also be able to retcon the short sighted decision to kill off Carnage. While we can't really bring Cletus Cassidy back without any variants or multiverse meddling, they can just easily say that the real being of Carnage was residing on Clintar and bada bing bada boom. Venom's greatest adversary, that's not Spider Man, is back, baby. Let there be Carnage. Alright, so fair warning, I'm about to bring up some Morbius rumors, so if they are true and you don't want to have some light spoilers for the film, uh, I'd skip to the next entry. Okay, so we may see Venom much sooner than we may have anticipated. In Morbius, actually. I am Venom. I'm just kidding, it's Dr. Michael Morbius. That is if it ever does come out. Remember when Morbius was supposed to release like four months before Venom Let There Be Carnage? The director of Morbius, Daniel Espinoza, all but confirmed Tom Hardy will be making a cameo in the movie. While discussing the scope of Morbius, he said, When you walk around there, the recording looks just like a Swedish production, but then when you look at the schedule and read names like Michael Keaton, Jared Leto, Tom Hardy, then it feels cool and very exciting. While this is probably just another post credit scene, I see Tom Hardy performance going one of two ways. Either he is just Eddie Brock reporting on the plasma-sucking vampire, or this is the beginning of the setup for that aforementioned Sinister Six movie where Adrian Toomes lures in Morbius and Venom. Either way, we will be seeing Venom much sooner than expected. Arguably, the biggest symbiote event to ever occur would be the recent 616 crossover, The King in Black. The event was more than just an Avengers level threat, tying in heroes from the street level like Daredevil, all the way to the outer reaches of space with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Essentially, the arc covers the history of Null, who is the creator of the symbiotes, who also happens to be the God of Darkness, a title so edgy you'd have to assume that he listens to the Black Parade on repeat. The event is kind of like Spider-Man Web of Shadows, in that New York has become a symbiote-infested battleground, except this time, Null will stop at nothing to defeat Eddie Brock. As we shift into an era where every single comic book adaptation is an all-out event film, the massive crossover potential here is fantastic, and it gives the entire Sony universe a chance to unite against a common foe. Admittedly, it's way too soon to be adapting this arc. Earlier on in the video, I teased a character that would be 
perfect as a third act villain for the Spidey Venom vs. movie, and that would be Null. To see the character introduced briefly like Thanos in Guardians of the Galaxy would be perfect setup with him coming back for proper, world-ending revenge a few years later. While all the scenarios listed are all just possibilities, there is one idea that I seriously doubt will happen, but I would absolutely love to see. Venom Let There Be Carnage had that whole breakup subplot. I'd love if Venom 3 defies expectations and just becomes a rom-com. No big set pieces at all, just Venom and Eddie in quirky, oddly romantic situations. 